very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, please permit me, therefore, to have the honor to invite the chairman of this event, who doubles as the vice chancellor of our university, Professor Nyaudo Ndayo, to please give us his opening remarks. Thank you. Thank you very much. The Union you know, Ban are noted everywhere to be a standard. Continue with their good work. Uh, the Deputy Vice Chancellor Administration and all here present so that we can save some time and go into the real business. They me to adopt all the protocol that has been so well detailed and spelled out by the moderator. I'm sure you have accepted what I'm saying. Having said that, let me first and foremost thank God Almighty for who he is. He has, through his mercy, his grace, counted us among the living and helped us to achieve what we needed to do today, one of which is why we are gathered here. Today, we are going to talk, uh, listen to a renowned micro medical lab scientist, our very own professor, Professor Inetie Ifyong Moses. He is going to speak to us on the topic, survival of the fittest in the kingdom of unequal, a microbial uh, idiosyncrasies and human coexistence. Well, I don't know what it means. I'm sure you are not, I'm not too sure that you know what it means. But when we finish, we will know. But one thing I would like to point out is it is more relevant today because we are all struggling to survive. We are even in the household, in survival of the fittest. In the church, we see survival of the fittest. So I'm sure by the time it finishes, we will now be able to adjust ourselves. So I welcome you, the town, and thank you for coming to join with us, the gang, for our own monthly, monthly tonic. So sit well, enjoy yourself, and I'm sure by the time you leave this place, you'll be more knowledgeable in some areas than when you came in. Thank you very much, and welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, you can clap better than that. Celebrate the eighth of St. Vice Chancellor. Thank you very much, sir, for that wonderful tone setting for this wonderful event, the 99th inaugural lecture. The Vice Chancellor, sir, very distinguished ladies and gentlemen. At this point, it is my pleasure to call on Professor Wemedimbok S. Ekanem, HOD Department of Community Medicine, Faculty of Clinical Sciences, for the presentation of the 99th inaugural lecturer. Very distinguished audience, let's applaud her as she steps forward. My dear Vice Chancellor and members of the high table, the town and the gown, distinguished audience, permit me to stand on the protocol that has been established for want of time. When I was told by Dr. Uh, Professor Anietia Moses last year that I will take this task, I was simply taken aback. But I was happy and, very, and felt very honored. So today I'm going to do that task, presenting the 99th inaugural lecturer for the University of Uyo. So Professor Moses, please can you stand and approach the podium.
you remain standing until I'm done with this task. Thank you. An Ethiopian Moses was born on September 27, 1964, at Methodist Hospital Itongbang, into the family of Moid Yongokwan Udon Naikane Mesang in Kuotsunko Ikono, local government area of Akwaibom State. Anietia grew to become a very lovely child. He attended primary school in Kuotsunko in Ikono, local government area, the road in Ikotekbene from 1970 to 1970 and passed the first school living certificate examination with distinction grade and proceeded for his secondary education at Ikono People's High School, Nokomikono, from 1975 to 1977. He went on to governor, government secondary school in Tonsek, Esienudem, local government, from 1977 to 1980, where he obtained the West African school certificate in 1980. He later proceeded to the School of Basic Studies at Kampa, where he obtained the General Certificate of Education in 1983. President Mandela of South Africa once said, a winner is a dreamer who never gives up. As a young boy, like Joseph in the Bible, Anieti had the dream of being in the laboratory to conduct productive experiments. In his little mind, Anietia, like Muhammad Ali, the boxing legend, said, if my mind can conceive it and my heart can believe it, then I can achieve it. However, the path to achieving this dream seemed quite rough. And so in 1981, at the end of his secondary education, he saw himself taking off to work as a storekeeper and account clerk with a private water construction company at Adarokbo in Etinan, local government area. While working there, his uncle, Professor Ododo Moses Ekanemesang, by divine intervention, came one day and ordered him to quit the job and register to retake the GCE examination at School of Basic Studies, Akampa. The obedience to that order set him on the path to realizing a life dream and fulfilling destiny, which has culminated to who Anietie is today. So in 1983, he took both JAM and GC examinations and passed with credits in all subjects. And that got him admitted to studying for a Bachelor of Science degree in Medical Laboratory Technology in the University of Calabar. Four years later, in 1987, he graduated with a second class lower division in medical laboratory technology, specializing in medical microbiology. He was admitted to study for a master of science degree in the University of Medgar degree in 1992. He graduated and obtained an MSc degree in medical microbiology in 1995. Two years after, he enrolled for a doctorate degree in the same university and obtained a Doctor of Philosophy PhD in Microbiology in 2005. The same year, he enrolled for a Master in Health Planning and Management program. He graduated and obtained the degree in 2007. In addition to his many academic qualifications, Professor Moses has several professional qualifications, and these include Fellow of the West African Postgraduate College of Medical Laboratory Science in 2020, Associate of the Medical Laboratory Science Council of Nigeria in 1988, and in 2014, he obtained a certificate in immunology from the Federa Federation of Clinical Immunology Society in the United States of America his work life. On the marching order of his uncle, young Anietia Moses had to quit his first job to pursue education, and no regrets at all at this. On graduating from the University of Calabar in 1987, he was posted to Borono State for the mandatory National Youth Service Course Scheme, and his place of primary assignment was the University of Medigree Teaching Hospital, 
where he served as the NYSC medical laboratory scientist. The NYC posting opened the door for him to be retained and appointed as medical laboratory scientist one in the University of Medigree Teaching Hospital at the end of his service year in 1988. Specifically, he worked as a medical laboratory scientist in the Department of Immunology of the University of Medigree Teaching Hospital. He grew through the years to the rank of a chief medical lab scientist in 2003. A year later, in 2004, he was appointed the laboratory manager at Harvard School of Public Health in the Apin Pepha Laboratory. Three years later, he was appointed the acting director of the same laboratory. While serving in the University of Medigree Teaching Hospital, because of his love for teaching, he took up part-time teaching positions in the Department of Medical Microbiology, College of Medical Sciences, University of Medigree, as an associate lecturer. He also was a lecturer in the Science Laboratory Technology Program in the Faculty of Science, University of Medigree. And thirdly, Professor Anietia Moses joined the University of Rio, having transferred his services from University of Medigree on June 2, 2008, as a senior lecturer to the Department of Medical Microbiology and Parasitology in the College of Health Sciences in the University of Rio. He also served as the University of Rio, at the University of Rio on 11 postgraduate level courses. He's currently a professor in the Department of Medical Laboratory Science in this university. He was promoted to the ranks of Associate Professor and Professor in 2012 and 2015, respectively, and has been a permanent member of the Senate of the University of Rio since then. He has received many awards, one of which is the Leadership Award by the African Resources International in Arizona, United States of America. His administrative and leadership positions. Professor Nietzsche Moses is an astute scholar and administrator, both within and outside the university. In the University of Rio, he currently serves as the pioneer dean of the Faculty of Allied Health Sciences, a position he started December of last year. Thank you. He served as director in 2017 to last year, 2023. He's a departmental postgraduate course coordinator of three courses, initiated and ex the establishment of the postgraduate diploma in medical immunology program in 2019. And that program is currently training the fourth batch of professionals. It is now domiciled in the School of Continuing Education and Professional Studies. In the same year, 2019, he also coordinated the establishment of four new professional programs in the College of Health Sciences, namely Medical Lab Science, Nursing Science, Physiotherapy, and Radiology and Radiation Science. Currently, Professor Moses chairs the University of Rio Health Research and Ethics Committee and had in the past chaired at least seven statutory and ad hoc committees of the university. Also, he has served as a member in 11 statutory and ad hoc committees. Outside the University of Rio, Professor Moses is the chairman board of trustees for the African Center for Health Leadership since 2013. And also, the director of missions operations for the Christian Family Mission of Nigeria from 2009. <laughs> Professor Moses has served as the chairman and lead, team lead for accreditation and resource verification visit panels of the Nigerian Universities Commission to three universities. It's all health research and development in the University of Rio Teaching Hospital from 2019 till date. Professor Moses is a community leader. He's a vice chairman, unquote, one, unquote, word, eight leadership council, as well as Mbono Foro, unquote, a in Econo local government's area. 
His other academic citizenship activities include he has 73 journal articles to his credit, 40 published in international journals, and 33 in national journals. He has three book chapters and two articles listed in conference proceedings. He has written several technical reports on HIV AIDS for international and national organization, organizations, and his works have been cited four 167 times in Google Scholar, with an H index and I turn index of 11 and 14, respectively. Professor Moses has drawn a total of eight grants, five research and three travel grants. He's attended and presented papers in 20 conferences, nine international and 11 national. Professor Moses served as an external examiner in four Nigerian universities from 2014. And currently, he's an external examiner in the University of Lagos. He has also been appointed as external assessor for professoral candidates in eight Nigerian universities. He served as an editor of three reputable journals between 2009 and 2022. And currently, he's a section advisor for the Annals of Medical Laboratory Science. He has supervised three doctoral students' research, two of which are completed. Furthermore, 23 out of the 28 master's students' research that he supervised have been a member of many professional bodies, most of which he currently holds key leadership positions. Some of these include Vice President West African Postgraduate College of Medical Laboratory Science from January of last year, Chairman, Nigerian Chapter of West African Postgraduate College of Medical of Immunology, West African Postgraduate College of Medical Laboratory Science from 2020 till date. Professor Moses is a member of the sixth governing board of the Medical Laboratory Science Council of Nigeria. He is a member and was a guest lecturer presenter at the World Immunology Day of last year 2023 lecture of the Nigerian Society of Immunology. Due to his resilience and knack for cracking challenges, Professor Moses all often gets invited by the state zonal and national program coordinators for community and consultancy services. Thus, he has a long list of such community and consultancy services that he has provided over the years. Currently, he is the co-chair of Akwaibum State's HIV Prevention Technical Working Group and co-chair of Akwaibum State Laboratory Technical Working Group. Thank you. On his social life, Professor Moses is happily married to his friend and companion of inestimable value, Professor Eno Anietie Moses, herself a professor of analytical chemistry of the Department of Chemistry in this university. That union is blessed with four adorable children, Dr. Ikemini Anietie Moses, Imabong Anietie Moses, Akanimo Anietie Moses and Enobong Anietie Moses. He loves dancing and listening to music, particularly Christian a cappella, reggae, and Ibibio cultural music. I present to you the 99th inaugural lecturer, <laughs> Professor Anietie Efiong. Moses, first inaugural lecturer in the Department of Medical Laboratory Science in the University of Uyo. The pioneer dean and first inaugural lecturer in the Faculty of Allied Health Sciences, University of Uyo. As I invite him to deliver his lecture titled, Survival of the Fittest in the Kingdom of Unequal, Microbial Idiosyncrasies and human coexistence. You're welcome, sir.
my beloved audience. My name, as has been mentioned, is Professor Anete Ephiom Moses. And my topic of discourse today in this inaugural lecture is titled Survival of the Fittest in the Kingdom of Unequal Microbial Idiosyncrasies and Human Coexistence. A lot of persons have been asking me what this means. And they were excited about it, and I told them to come. And I've seen a lot of them here, and I'm happy that they are here. As an introduction, an inaugural lecture is usually delivered to mark the inauguration of a professor when he or she is being celebrated as an addition to the rank of a particular university. It is regarded as a formal announcement of the arrival of another professor. But it is an obligation which a professor is required to fulfill in the course of his or her academic career in the university. However, not all professors have the opportunity to deliver an inaugural lecture for various reasons. I am therefore very privileged and remain grateful to the Almighty God for the grace to stand before this august audience today to deliver the 99th inaugural lecture of this great Italian of knowledge. <laughs> Let's go into insight of my inaugural lecture. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, ladies and gentlemen, the title of my, my inaugural lecture, Survival of the Fittest in the Kingdom of Unequal, Microbial Idiosyncrasies and Human Coexistence, Drawing my name, I am there among them. Matthew 18, verse 20. This quotation is used metaphorically to emphasize happily in a symbiotic relationship. However, due to community dynamics of microorganisms referred to here as microbial idiosyncrasies, which means unconventional behaviors of some bacteria, an uneasy relationship may develop, and either of them attempts to harm the other. For microbes, the more territory could be humans, they can capture and spread, the better for their survival. We are ready to infect, multiply, exit the infected host, and spread at any given opportunity, except for those that had developed immunity. Immunity, that means they are resistant against the infection. So, being immune to microbial infection through vaccination becomes a game changer making the individual a survivor, while the unvaccinated becomes a victim as the organism survives and thrives. Therefore, only the fittest survive in the kingdom of one equal. Furthermore, just like in the symbiotic dance, our bodies host a bustling microbial community. It could be bacteria, viruses, fungi, or parasites. And they all find refuge within us, like guests at a grand ball. They waltz through our bloodstream, inhabit our gut, and reside on our skin. This coexistence is not accidental at all. It is a delicate balance, a symbiotic ballet. But beware, the microbial wall has its squares. These microbial idiosyncrasies defy convention. Some microbes play nice, aiding digestion, synthesizing vitamins, and bolstering our immune system. Others, however, have unconventional behaviors like party gate crashes, disrupting the harmony. The, un the uneasy relationship may develop like a crowded room where humans and micro microbes mingle. The air crackles with potential. The symbiotic relationship persists until it doesn't. Sometimes the microbes turn a rogue. They seek to harm their gracious host, exploiting vulnerabilities, causing infections. Microbes are cunning strategies. Their survival depends on capturing territories. And the more territories could be human or animal, they gather, the richer the microbial banquet. They log, ready to seize opportunity to spread, multiply, and thrive. The host dilemma begins as the microbes enter the unsuspecting host. We humans are unwittingly providing the stage. A susceptible host requires an infectious agent Becoming a vessel for microbial propagation. Unknowingly, humans become carriers. Unwittingly, they spread the microbial drama. Immunization becomes our shield, the ultimate game changer. 
vaccines arm humans against microbial onslaught as they transform us into survivors. But for the unvaccinated, they remain vulnerable, the unwitting victim. So, in the kingdom of unequal coexistence, only the fittest prevail. While microbes vie for supremacy, humans seek immunity. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, permit me, therefore, to go straight into the, my research activities by making some introductory remarks on my area of expertise. My areas of research include, uh, interests include medical microbiology, which involves detection, identification, distribution, and study of activities of microbes capable of infecting and causing diseases in humans. It also includes public health microbiology, which is a cross-cutting area that spans the fields of human, animal, food, water, and environment, and environmental microbiology, with a focus on infectious diseases that impact public health. I'm also a field of immunology that concerns immune mechanisms of host protection against infection by microbes and understanding the, understanding the interface in in humans and are referred to as pathogens. We have some typhi, some uh, staplicococcus aureus and the rest. Those that do not cause disease but coexist with man are called normal with humans. We have other disease causing microorganisms like viruses which are obligatory intracellular pathogens that replicate within cells. Many are associated with a wide variety of viral diseases, measles, chickenpox, HIV, AIDS, and the rest. We also have other microorganisms that cause diseases like um, parasites, which are organisms during the whole or part of their existence in life, live in, and we call them endoparasite, or on the body, we call them ectoparasite, of another organism of different species, from which they derive sustenance for the whole or part of their existence. Examples are plasmodium, roundworm, the tapeworm. We also have the fungi that are eukaryotic organisms. They are widely distributed in air, dust, and formites. And medical important ones are aspergillus species, canida species, streptococcus, and the dermatophytes, the ones that are responsible for ringworm. For example, ringworm of the head, that is called tinea capitis, ringworm of the body, ringworm of the nails, and so on and so forth. We want to look at how man encounters microorganisms. We, man encounters microorganisms through immediate environment. Microorganisms spread within human population. We, when we interact with animals, we also encounter microorganisms. When we change our environment, someone that is traveling from Uyo to Abuja, he has finished, or he or she has finished packing his, box, his boxes, and everything is well kept, not knowing that mosquito that might be harboring malaria parasite has jumped into his box. There at Abuja, he opens the box, the mosquito flies out and starts biting and distributing the disease. We also encounter microorganisms through commercial activities, exchange of goods and services. Now, how does man, how, what are the main routes of uh, microorganisms entry into the body of man? It could be direct or indirect. If it's direct through the mouth, eyes, nose, even through wounds or bites that breach the skin barrier. Indirectly, when we have soil hands, hands with microorganisms, laden with microorganisms, and we open it, the door and enter and leave the microorganism there. An unsuspecting person comes, open the same door, pick up what you left behind, the person might be infected. Very important way by which man encounters microorganisms, like we earlier mentioned, is man interaction with animals. Now, zoonosis comes out of this. Zoonoses are diseases that are naturally transmitted between vertebrate animals and humans, and they pose great risks to public health. More than 200 known zoonotic diseases have been identified with severity ranging from mild to severe and chronic to death. According to World Health Organization, more than 60% of all newly identified and existing infectious diseases in humans are zoonotic. And this is the reason why WHO is taking it very serious with animal and man interactions and the disease that comes out of it. Example is the case of COVID-19 virus, the SARS-CoV-2. Here we can see the possible roles animals play in transmitting SARS-CoV-2, the COVID-19 pandemic that you know, we all face and the whole world was uh, also faced. 
but it's a natural host. But being a natural host can transmit the virus to intermediate hosts like snake pangolins. And from this intermediate host, humans can get infected. When humans are infected, pet animals can also be infected. Farm animals can also be infected. These farm and pet animals can equally infect man. Now, some experiments have been carried out to see the array of animals that can be infected with uh, SARS-CoV-2. Cats, ferrets, we want, were those ones that can be infected, whereas other ones listed there were unfortunate or fortunate not to be infected. Now, another case of zoonotic transmission is the case of Ebola virus. We all remember Ebola virus disease. First, it was a disease of the Central African Republic, but before we know it, it also engulfed the whole West African region and South Africa. Now, the virus is transmitted from wildlife to humans through contact with infected fruit bats. And this fruit, infected fruit bat and other intermediate hosts, once infected, can also infect others. Now, man can also be infected directly through the process of slaughtering or even eating undercooked bush meat. So when you cook, eat that bush meat, watch out, be sure it's well cooked. Now, it's this interest of zoonotic diseases that made the whole world come out with a concept called One Health Concept. And how this can be used to contain zoonotic diseases. The World Health Concept links human, animal, and wildlife health issues and is gaining prominence because zoonotic disease transmission is giving large-scale I'm giving last girl a, a break worldwide. But according to CDC, the, in, the importance of the approach as the One Health concept is to help protect the health of all living beings by bringing experts across fields together to solve problems threatening humans, animals, and the environment. Connection between people, animals, plants, and their shared environment. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir. Intensive farming practice it's another important factor fueling human animal, be it wildlife or livestock interaction, which can result in emergence of pathogens that can evolve or jump hosts like the, um, the, the mad cow disease, a variant uh, of crucial Jacob disease in human. Now, apart from man and human interaction, there are other common vehicles by which microorganisms can be transmitted. Waterborne transmission is one of them, and we have a lot of serious problems, a lot of uh, problems with taking, drinking portable and clean water in our environment. Foodborne transmission can also bring about micro uh, microorganism transmission. And this occurs when pathogens enter the host's body via contaminated food, they get multiplied and invade the body and cause tissue destruction. We can also take in already prepared toxins in food. These toxins are shared by microorganisms and the body can absorb it and disease comes uh, follows. Other mechanisms by which microorganisms can be transmitted are airborne transmission, vector borne. In the case of airborne transmission, of course, sneezing, coughing can spread microorganisms from infected individuals to the susceptible. Vectors like mosquito mite ticks also can transmit infection. I believe we know that the mosquito that we play about can transmit several diseases like malaria, dengue fever, yellow fever, West Nile virus, and Zika virus, among others. And let's look at okay, microorganism has caused disease, can cause disease. How can these pathogens cause tissue damage? There are two mechanisms. I will not go into detail because of time. Details are in the book. But let's rest on the fact that direct mechanisms like production of isotoxins, production of endotoxins, indirect mechanisms like immune complexes and others are those mechanisms that can cause tissue damage. In the body, we have compartments. Now, when microorganisms get in and cause disease, there are some compartments, like, in fact, there are two basic compartments. The extracellular compartment made up of epithelial cells, interstitial spaces, blood and lymph. In these compartments, once micro, one microorganism enters the body through whichever means, the hosts, you and I, initiate protective immunity against these microbes by using either antibodies, complement, phagocytosis, or neutralization process and get rid of microorganisms. Those are the fittest that could survive the onslaught, the idiosyncrasies of microbes. 
In the intracellular compartments, we have the cytoplasmic and the fascicular. These are also compartments that microorganisms can invade and cause disease in us. Microbial idiosyncrasies and the Trick, 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 trick,